All right, everybody, let's talk about the pattern next week. Let's talk about apps a little bit. Let's talk about it and not get too much into the details because we just don't know. That's the honesty of everything. So let's get right to it. We'll talk about what's happening right now. What is going to happen next week, right? We, we know a couple things for sure. It's going to be very cold next week. Now, the degree of cold, we're not entirely certain. It's going to be below average. I am very certain of that. But looking at crazy temperatures of record-breaking lows and stuff, those are things that are still a little uncertain because even though we've got very high confidence, and this is uh, the 500 millibar charts, basically kind of what the upper level pattern is going to do next week. We go into the weekend, we've got a big storm system moving across the country that kind of opens the floodgates to the Arctic. And I'm going to stop this Sunday into Monday. Um, this is the European ensemble. So I'm not looking at a single run. I'm looking at ensemble uh, mean of very, very various runs of this guidance. And the thing you see is this big dip in the jet stream and that flow coming straight out of the Arctic. This is really cold flow. Um, this is a little lobe of the polar vortex coming down over Hudson Bay. No, it's not moving into the U.S. It's not moving to Florida. Jeez, man, some of these TikTok people and other things just like make stuff up and people eat it up. But it is going to move south into Canada, and that is going to be um, what's going to usher in cold air. The way you got to look at the polar vortex, um, a good example is it's like a it's like a big barrier. It spins up there, and when it's super strong, it holds the cold air back. When it weakens, and the reason it weakens, by the way, record heat up into Alaska. This is record warmth. So this is record warmth. This is record warmth. That gets pushed up into the Arctic, warms it up, and shoves the cold air south in this direction. So the reason it's so cold here is because it's so warm here and here. Um, and that's why sometimes when the polar vortex moves, I get a little cautious with people saying, hey, it's, it's wobbling or weakening. We're going to get really cold because... For every area that it gets really cold when this happens, there are areas like the Pacific Northwest, Alaska, who have 30, 40 degrees above normal temperatures, while areas in here could have 30 to 40 degrees below. So just be cautious when you hear that term because somebody's going to get warm. There's always the yin and yang of this. When it's warm on the West Coast and in Alaska, it's usually cold on the East Coast and here in the Carolinas. So that's the way that the atmosphere works. But this is a really cold pattern. The thing we don't know is, okay, does this dive mainly to the central U.S.? Does it dive to the Great Lakes? Does it drive to the Northeast? We know somewhere in here it's going to be cold, but the degree of that is going to dictate whether it's record-breaking or just really, really cold. Certainly looks like some of the coldest air we've seen in the last several years just because it's been so warm, but that's what we're seeing next week. So we know it's going to be cold. Well, then the next thing, could we have a storm? Well, the storm track is like this. One of the problems with cold outbreaks is, believe it or not, um, if the cold air gets far enough south, and if it does drive deep to the Gulf Coast, it can shove the storm track so far south that the threat for wintry weather can actually be south of the Charlotte area and the Carolinas. <laughs> that has happened. It could be more of a snow ice risk for the low country into Georgia and not in North Carolina and Virginia. So you got to be cautious of that because that, that could happen. That's the potential. So one of the things we're looking at for next week is the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook is really cold. This is the 20th through the 24th. So the middle of next week, it's cold and there is above average precipitation chances across the Gulf Coast. The 8 to 14 day outlook keeps it below average and keeps the chance of precipitation. So yeah, there's some ingredients. That's why I say when I say there's a favorable pattern for wintry weather, that's what I'm talking about. We're not getting into specifics of, hey, we're going to get X amount of snow on this date or ice. And that's the other thing. Please, please, please hear this. Just because we say wintry weather, it does not mean snow. There's four precipitation types with winter weather. There is snow, which everyone thinks about. There's sleet. There's freezing rain. And then four would be a mix of some of those with maybe liquid rain in there. So it could be any of those. And those are the things we don't know. Those are super hyper-specific because the difference between those four precipitation types are literally tenths of a degree at various altitudes. There is not a person in the world or a model in the world that will accurately predict those differences seven to 10 days out. It's just not possible. Yes, can I put something out there? Doesn't mean it's right. Precision is not the same as accuracy. So just be very cautious of that. So let's get into the models and why people are going crazy over things. 
So I like looking at all the data, and this is what apps don't show you. I wish apps in general would just be transparent on where the data is coming from and, and show how often it changes. They really don't. They just spit something out, people look at it, and they go, oh, that's going to happen. And then six hours later, it changes, and they're like, what happened? Well, the model gets run every six hours in many cases, many of the global models. And sometimes there's multiple ensembles. So just give you an example. This is the European deterministic model. Look at some of the changes. These are the last several model runs. Um, so this is not this coming weekend, but next Saturday. There were a couple model runs um, just a day or two ago that had single digits in teens for the Charlotte area. Uh, the last run last night had 60s. Okay, this model in the span of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven model runs went from a high of 12 to a high of 62. Okay, and you're probably saying, well, what? That's useless. Yeah, we know that as meteorologists. That's why we don't tell you this stuff because we know it's going to change. So what do we do if we had to forecast for that time frame? I would tell you, eh. It's, it's probably going to be below average. And then over time, I would say, hey, it's trending warmer. It's trending warmer. It's trending warmer. And now today, you know, two weeks out, I would tell you, hey, it's trending warmer for that weekend. But I know it's going to change again. So I wouldn't get very specific. I would talk about trends and is it above or below average. So that's why you got to be very careful of looking at long range deterministic stuff. So let's look at snow, right? We'll, we'll look at snow real quickly here. Um, the GFS model, right? This is the latest GFS ensemble. Next week, there are some hints of snow, but the mean is currently zero. This is a 10-day forecast, okay? Right now, the 10-day forecast for the GFS, which it'll run this morning, we'll see if it changes, which it will again. Um, the mean of all these is basically zero, but there are some individual members, like there's a crazy one here, right? Seven inches, ooh, next Thursday, Friday. What if your app uses just that piece of data? and ignores the 30 other pieces of information. A lot of apps do that, and you got to be careful of that. Um, you got to look at the mean. Let's look at the European. European data ensemble, 51 variations, okay? Why are we talking about a favorable pattern next week? This is a prime reason why. This is why I do think the middle of next week I'm watching because there is strong signals that we could see wintry weather. I would caution you, though, if your app uses one of these that shows 19 inches of snow, it's probably not very accurate because the mean is two inches, right? And there's also runs that show zero. That's the other flip side of this. Um, you will see people online, the people that don't know what they're talking about, when they see a run that shows snow, they'll go crazy. And then the next run, there's no snow. They go, oh, it's not happening. I, I'll be honest with you. Neither of those runs tell you much about anything because if the pattern remains the same, I'll go back to the pattern here. If this does not change and it's still favorable, just because a run comes in with a bunch of snow and the next run doesn't, doesn't mean this overall pattern has changed. The agreements are still there. So you got to be cautious. This, this is a two-way street. You can't go crazy when one run of the model says, we're getting snow, and the next run says, zero snow, and go, oh, it's not happening. In both of those cases, I would tell you, there's still a chance not to go back and forth and not be bipolar with individual model runs. Stick with the pattern. As long as this pattern right here stays the way it is, the chance of precipitation wintry precip next week is really not changing, okay? It's still there. That's why we don't get super precise because it's going to bounce around a little bit. So I will tell you right now, um, this is a good way to look at next Wednesday, middle of the week. There, This is the chance. This is the area we're watching for wintry weather potential. Now, is it, now, would I read too much into these percentages? Probably not, but you get the idea. Somewhere in here, there's a chance of wintry weather, and it's not just Wednesday. I would say it's Tuesday to Friday. That's the other thing. We're not even getting into the timing. We don't know about the timing because we don't know if this low pressure forms, where it goes, how it behaves. So this is the uncertainty part of the forecast. It's always important to tell you what we do know and what we don't know. And what we do know right now, I could tell you as a, somebody who's done this for a long time, lived in this area, the pattern is favorable for wintry weather, but it's not locked in. And when I say wintry weather, it doesn't mean we're going to get a snowstorm. It doesn't mean it's going to be um, sleet. It doesn't mean it's going to be ice. It could be any of those. In fact, you've got to be careful that this could not, this could become an ice storm or a sleet event or a really cold rain or some horrible mix of all of them. So 
it's really important to keep all those things in the back of your mind and just ignore these apps. I, I'd love to tell you there's one app out there that's better than the others. Some are, but they're all kind of not great. They're not local, they're automated. We all use them, right? I always equate it to fast food. Like some fast food places are better than others. We all probably go to fast food at some point for a quick bite or something, but you shouldn't be eating near every meal. It's just not good for you. Um, and when there's high impact events coming, talk to me, ask somebody local. There's tons of us doing this. Uh, you don't have to say I'm the greatest and you wanna to come to me. I, I don't care. Go to somebody local, a human person that you can have a conversation online or real life with that is actually there that can answer questions and not some computer in another state or another country spitting out a forecast to you that has no interaction with you at all. So, of course, I'll be talking a lot about this over the coming days. All of us will because we're kind of forced to in the age we live in. But I just want to give you what we know now and what we're keeping an eye on for next week. Super cold, most certain thing. Winter weather, possible, but still not certain. So don't get too excited yet. Just keep paying attention.